You're new to the area and it seems like a rough part of town. Luckily, you've got your Glock pre-staged ready for immediate access, thanks in part to your new gun magnet. Tactical, CDI factor, legal. Ooh, let's talk about it. Let's play this out. The police lights come on and you're being pulled over because the officer believes that your window tint is too dark. But that's news to you because you bought the car this way. More on tent tickets later. Two officers approach your vehicle in the traditional fashion with one officer on the driver's side and one officer providing overwatch from the passenger side. Your pistol's attached to the gun magnet and it's concealed from both the officer's point of view. But what if they ask you to get out of the car? Is it legal to have your gun like that? Should you tell the officer the gun's there? All these questions are going to be racing through your mind, making you more nervous during the stop than you would otherwise be. Are you comfortable enough of your understanding of Florida gun law to navigate this situation properly? Let me know down in the comments below. Gun magnets come in tactical black and they rank really high on the CDI factor. If you're a Florida man, that's all you need to know. But if you're a responsible gun owner, a concealed carry holder, or just new to Florida and trying to understand Florida's laws, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to talk about which law covers the legality of the gun magnets. We're also going to break the law down to find out if they actually comply and what those requirements would need to be to find a gun magnet that would comply with the law. We're going to look at one of the safety features that I believe is missing from most gun magnets. And we're going to answer one of your questions from a previous video. Giovanni Andre asked, Do I have to carry my gun on me while inside my car, or can I place it between my seat and the center console or door with a concealed carry permit? All that's up next. Check the description down below for links and resources to the things I talk about in this video. The first question we have to answer is what law applies? Because we're talking firearms, we're going to turn to Chapter 790 of the Florida State Statutes. In particular, once we get to Chapter 790, we're going to look at 790.25 subsection 5. This is the statute that regulates the carrying of firearms inside of a private vehicle. Notice, we are not relying on the powers associated with a concealed carry permit here. That's a totally different statute. If you're going to be carrying on your person inside the vehicle, I think you would look to the concealed carry laws. If you're going to be carrying the pistol inside the vehicle off of your person, at that point in time, we have to look at this statute and not the concealed carry permit statute. Keep in mind, there's more than one place to find the law. State statutes is a good starting point, but you also have to do secondary research such as case law and the Attorney General's website. Now, with gun magnets, it's so new, there's not a whole lot of information out there in the legal resource section to determine legality or not. So we'll be sticking with the state statutes today. With all that in mind, let's turn to Florida State Statute 790.25, subsection 5. This statute allows qualified people to carry a concealed firearm inside their vehicle without a concealed carry permit. Let's read the language. Possession in a private conveyance. Notwithstanding subsection 2, it is lawful and is not a violation of 790.01 for a person 18 years of age or older to possess a concealed pistol for self-defense within the interior of a private conveyance without a license if the pistol is securely encased or is not otherwise readily accessible for immediate use. You can continue reading the statute. I replaced the word pistol in there because later in the statute it gets a little muddled and I just want to be clear. So 18 years old for a lawful purpose including self-defense within the interior vehicle concealed securely encased. Those are the requirements. If we look to the definition section of chapter 790 we'll see a definition for concealed carry of a firearm as it relates to being on a person. Concealed firearm means any firearm as defined in subsection 6 which is carried on or about a person in such a manner as to conceal the firearm from the ordinary sight of another person. If we apply that definition of concealed to a vehicle, 
I think we have to make sure that looking from the outside of the vehicle to the inside of the vehicle, there's no possible way to see any portion of the pistol. Just stand outside your car and try to peer through and look. Here's the tip though, you cannot use the advantage of your tent. You're gonna have to assume that if your windows are tented, or even if they're not, that the officer is going to instruct you to put your windows down. So stand outside your window, hold in a flashlight, look down in your car, and see if you can see your pistol mounted on your gun magnet. If so, you got a problem. If not, you've passed the concealed carry test. It'd be nice to have some type of hood that could attach to the top of the magnet and then drape over top of the firearm to prevent it from being visible from the outside. Just a thought. Let's talk about tent tickets for a second. Have you ever been pulled over or received a traffic ticket for illegal tent? I used to love my tent meter when I was a police officer. I used it as an investigative tool to help me develop grounds for search and for arrest. I wouldn't say that I wrote a ton of tent tickets, but I definitely wrote my share. The funny thing is, as a criminal defense attorney, in fighting tent tickets, I realized that the procedure I was using as a police officer negated every one of the tickets. If I ever wrote you a tent ticket, you should have fought it, and you should have won. If you need a lawyer in Central Florida, give us a call, 407 507 Let's take a look at the definition of securely encased. Securely encased means in a glove compartment, whether or not locked, snapped in a holster, in a gun case, whether or not locked, in a zippered gun case, or in a closed box or container, which requires a lid or a cover to be opened for access. I don't think having a pistol attached to a gun magnet rises to the level of securely encased for the purpose of this statute. Securely attached maybe? But I don't know. It doesn't appear that these gun magnet quick draw designs are taking into consideration Florida gun law. Even if they did meet the legal requirements, these gun magnets would still violate my number one firearm safety principle, always protect the trigger. There's no exception to that rule. Always protect the trigger, always. Having a pistol attached to a magnet is not protecting the trigger enough. I still love the idea of a car gun magnet, I really do, but I want a situation where I can take my paddle holster, pull my paddle holster off my hip with the firearm still in the paddle holster, and then secure the paddle holster to the magnet and still allow for that quick draw access. There has to be some solution like that. Let's go to Giovanni's question. I have a concealed carry permit. Do I have to carry my gun on me while I'm in my car or can I carry it wedged in, me, in between my seats? Giovanni, if you've got your concealed carry permit, you can either carry on your person under the authority of the concealed carry permit or you can carry in your vehicle under the authority of the statute that we just reviewed, 790.25 subsection 5. Either way, you're going to have to comply with the provisions of the statute that you're choosing. To carry your pistol in between your seats, I don't think complies with securely encased. Once you put your pistol in your holster, it should remain there for the rest of the day unless you're drawing it for training or for some legitimate purpose. If you're going to remove your gun from your body, you should be removing the gun attached with the holster itself one of the ways I accomplish this is I carry with a paddle holster. That way I can quickly remove the holster from my belt line and secure the firearm inside the vehicle. Your daily concealed carry plan should not involve you removing your pistol from the holster. Developing solid habits is important. And the transitioning of your weapon getting in and out of the vehicle is one of those areas that you need to develop a solid habit for that mitigates all the risk. If you're taking your gun out of your holster and wedging it down between the seats, that is not a good long-term solution. Best of luck, I appreciate the question. If you're ready to take your understanding of Florida's stand your ground law to the next level, check out this video. Otherwise, YouTube suggests you'll like this one. Hit it hard.